So you've made yourself some great handmade products that you can't wait to sell. One of the next steps is to write some awesome product descriptions that are actually going to get people to buy them. This might seem simple, but a lot of people get this wrong and it's costing them sales. One study from Nielsen Norman Group found that 20% of purchase failures are potentially a result of missing or unclear product information. That's a lot of business to be missing out from for something as simple as a product description. It would be such a shame, right? Seeing your hard work, time, and effort making your crafts then go to waste by not spending a little extra time crafting a super clear, engaging product description. When you've done it once, you can sell that same product with that description over and over again. So it's definitely a valuable asset that you have to invest resources into. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how to write great descriptions, and I hope you can take these and use them to get your crafts into more of your buyer's hands. Hi, my name is May Pak and I help makers, artists, and designers make a living from selling their handmade products online. The first step is you need to define your ideal customer. Now, before you start writing any kind of product description, you need to know who you're writing for, right? You want your customers to read your descriptions thinking that they were written especially for them. That way, they're really going to get engaged with the product and they're going to feel like this product was made for them. But how do you know how to do that if you don't know who your ideal customer is in the first place? This is where defining your ideal customer comes into play. Essentially, what you need to do is sit down and try and get inside your ideal customer's head. Who are they? Where are they from? What are their problems? What are their interests? What really makes them tick? Pretty much every business, regardless of the industry, has to go through this process. I have a video here that shows you my own proprietary technique for how to identify your ideal customer. Now, once you know who that person is, you'll need to learn more about her and what makes her tick. What does she enjoy? Maybe she likes feeling comfortable above anything else, so she often wears cozy sweaters. Then figure out what is her problem regarding sweaters. So maybe she loves to shop, but she's jaded with chain stores because of their poor ethics towards the environment. I'm just making this stuff up. But once you've done this work, you can start to see how you can tailor product descriptions for your customer. Because there would be no point trying to write a product description for this person and then you're talking about things like speed or profitability or cheap prices or affordability. She'll have more of a connection with the fact that your product was sustainably produced, right? And I know it can feel like you're boxing yourself up and you're only talking to one person and you're turning away lots of other potential customers, but this is exactly how you make those sales. The more specific you can be, the better. Whereas if you are too vague and general and trying to appeal to everyone, then you're going to be speaking and appealing to no one. So just speak to the one person and the rest will follow. I promise you. I know it's counterintuitive, but that is actually how it works. Step two, what are the benefits? If you want your customers to buy your products, then they need to know what's in it for them. After all, they're taking the risk and parting with their hard-earned money to buy your product. So how do you convince them to buy? As the maker of your own product, we tend to get too deep into our own products. When we think about all the specifications that went into making the products, we forget about the benefits and what those are to the customer. They don't want to see a list of stats and specs unless maybe they're buying a piece of technology, right? Like a laptop. What they really want to see are the features and benefits of what you're selling. So a feature is a fact about the product. A benefit is what the product does for them or how it makes them feel. Anything you can write that will put the idea in the customer's head of a solution to their problems will be more effective in selling than any kind of list of stats and specs filled with technical jargon that laymen, which will be your customers, don't understand. Here's a snippet of a good example of one of my product descriptions. So this was written by someone I hired on Upwork almost 10 years ago, so unfortunately, I can't send you her name because she's not on there anymore. But this is for my pumpkin pie necklace. This is the features, which is all about sizing and what the necklace comes with, what it's made, and so on. Measuring approximately three quarters of an inch in size, this scented charm is designed to look simple, elegant, and understated. 
The real attention grabber of this 18 inch sterling silver ball necklace is the scent, which draws people in close to admire its elaborate detail. Now, this is the benefit, which tells more of a story and gets you feeling things. It gets you feeling emotions. Delicately scented with a touch of ginger and clove, our pumpkin scented charm is a delicious reminder of cozy winter nights huddled in front of the fire. Subtle yet contemporary, the fragrance is sweet and fruity with a musky undertone, perfect for ladies a little less pink or candy obsessed. You can see how the benefit is more story driven. There's a bit more narrative there, right? Telling stories starts to evoke emotions and feelings with your customers, and we tend to buy things more with our heart than with our heads. If we have a good feeling about something, then we're far more likely to actually buy it. Telling a story is also another good way of being unique and setting yourself apart from your competition. Step three, reflect your store's tone of voice. This is where you can really set yourself apart from other sellers. You know, anyone can write generic phrases like, this product is handmade, well, so are millions of other products, or this necklace is amazing. Well, okay, you said it, not, I don't know, if you're telling the truth, who's to believe you, right? And that's not going to appeal to your ideal customer because it's too broad and it's not specific to them. So like, are your products a bit alternative? Because if that's the case, why not have specific language to reflect that in your descriptions? Get creative and make your customers feel like they're talking to a person rather than reading faceless copy. If you feel confident writing funny descriptions and that reflects your brand, then go for it. If your stuff is classy, then go for a classy vibe. Really let the personality of your products and brand shine here. So at Tiny Hands, we go for a very warm, bubbly, friendly, and of course, delicious vibe because that's our brand. Compare my pumpkin pie necklace description with this bangle from Tiffany. Wrapped around the wearer in a continuous, unbroken circle, this hinged bangle features scintillating diamonds and a strong T motif at the center. A reinvention of a Tiffany icon, Tiffany T1 designs represent individual strength and perpetual power, worn outwardly to express what lies within. Stack this hinged bangle with other Tiffany T bracelets for a bold look, or simply wear it on its own. Just reading that, you can expect this to be thousands of dollars. They're using words like individual strength, perpetual power, bold look, reinvention. Those words are a lot stronger, more powerful, and more aggressive than the words that I've got for my necklace, which are cozy, sweet, heartwarming, cute. See, like even words have their own brands and you get a different feeling with the different sets of words, right? Tiffany knows the kinds of customers they want to attract. So once you understand this and you can start to develop the tone of voice for your store, don't be afraid to have fun with your tone of voice if it feels that reflects your store. Step four, make description scannable. We all live busy lives, right? And our attention spans are like goldfish these days. Well, your customers are no different. With so much content on the internet, they want to review your product descriptions nice and quickly. One way of doing that is to present information in bullet points. That way your audience can see important information nice and quickly in a way that's easy to digest. Innocent Drinks does this really well. Their descriptions are super simple and they're condensed into nice and big bullets that are really eye-catching enough to grab your attention. What they also do here is replace bullets with check marks, which give a really positive feel to the page and gives a suggestion that it's there to solve problems. That positive feeling is subconscious and it's subtle, but it's there. Another site that uses bullets is Amazon. So let's take the Echo product, for example. You'll see that there's actually quite a lot of detail there, but the bullets break it up to make it a little bit more easy to read. If all of that text was in a block, it might look a little intimidating and put customers off, right? Having too much detail in one paragraph is a surefire way of putting people off a product. So the easier you can make information digestible, the better. Again, like the other steps, there is an opportunity here to be a bit creative, just like Innocent Drinks have done. You could use arrows or some other icon or emoji as your bullets to draw your customer's eyes to the benefits of the product. If, of course, that is on brand for you. 
Now there are plenty more tips out there to make the most out of your listings and plenty more videos on this channel to help you out with your craft business. So good luck with writing your descriptions and if you've used these tips or have any more of your own, then let me know in the comments. Subscribe to this channel if you found this video helpful and then stay on to watch this next video on the screen.